get ready to see how you can take Dollar Tree products and use these six amazingly simple yet extremely beautiful techniques to completely transform them into high-end looking home decor. And as always, DIY treats. Welcome to my channel, Craft, Eat, Repeat. Hi guys, it's Anika and welcome to my channel, Craft Eat Repeat. So I'm really excited about today's video because on top of showing you some beautiful DIYs and just creations that I made this week, I'm also going to be showing you some techniques that I use to make different faux finishes. So this makes it really affordable and really fun to transform some of those Dollar Tree items, give them a glow up and turn them into something that will just look beautiful in your home for room decor, for gifts, whatever you want. So through these projects, I'm gonna be showing you how to do a faux wood finish using paint, a faux metal finish using paint. I'm even gonna show you guys how I do beautiful lettering and graphic transfers before I had a vinyl cutter, because I know some of you guys don't have one, and so this technique is going to be perfect for you. So make sure you stay tuned and watch every different DIY so that you can see all the techniques that I use while I'm crafting. If you're new here, welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you like what you see, please hit that subscribe button. Everyone hit that notification bell so you'll be ready when my next video comes out. And when it's over, head down to the comments and let me know which DIY was your favorite, but also if you have any techniques that you use that I could add to my repertoire while I'm crafting, please let me know about them down in the comments. I'm also really excited about today's video because it's a collaboration with DIY Beauty On Purpose. Now I love her YouTube channel and I am obsessed with her Instagram because every time I watch, I get great ideas for simple DIYs, easy to put together, but they look gorgeous each and every time. And I'm just like, man, I wish I had thought about that, but why do I have to think about it? I can just watch her channel, enjoy the video and get some great inspiration. So after you watch my video, I want you to head on over to DIY Beauty on Purpose and check her out. Okay guys, it's time to craft. For my first DIY, I'm going to show you how I do my faux wood finish. Now I love using this finish on Dollar Tree items because I can take any plastic material that I get there and make it look like wood. Now, even though this is white, I'm gonna go ahead and paint it with this white chalk paint. I just find it easier to do this technique when I have more of a matte finish. Also, if you're gonna do a transfer, which I will show you later, you'll also need to go ahead and paint a layer of white even if your original material is white. Once my paint has dried, I'm ready to do the next step. I'm going to take this Waverly Wax in the color Antique, and all I'm gonna do is go in vertical or horizontal strokes, whichever way you're looking and whichever way you want the grain of your wood to look like it's going. The point is you want to go all in the same direction. Now, anytime you change directions, you're gonna get a little bit of a buildup of the wax there that's a little bit darker, and you're gonna use that to your advantage to make it look like knots and imperfections in the wood. So as you'll see, I kind of do a little swirly and then kind of paint over that and just leave a little bit. Some of the lines I'm not doing perfectly straight. And the point of that is just to get that sense of movement in the wood. And once that's done, you're just gonna set that to the side to dry. While I'm waiting for my cutting board, I'm going to grab some of these boxes from Dollar Tree to finish out this project. Now, even though these seem like they should be the same size, they are not exactly the same size. So make sure you line them up at Dollar Tree and get two that are as close to the same size as you possibly can. Now I'm only going to use the little inner portion of these little wooden drawers. I'll use the outer portion in another DIY. But for right now, I'm just going to take these and I decided to paint these with black chalk paint. Of course, you can use whatever color fits the decor in your home. 
once those are dry, I'm going to add some lettering to it. Now, stenciling is not necessarily my strong suit, but I really like the look of it. So I keep trying um, to perfect my craft when it comes to stenciling letters onto things. Now I do like kind of an imperfect stamped looking effect. So I decided to use this white chalk paint and I just dabbed my paint all over. And this made it so it was not perfectly solid, but it also made it slightly more forgiving if I made any mistakes. And I like that imperfect stamped look, so that was perfect for me. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use my dryer in between layers so that I can dry up that letter before placing my stencil down again to do the next letter. I decided to put herbs on the side of mine. Of course, if you're growing something specific, you can go ahead and put cilantro, basil, whatever you'd like. Now I'm just gonna follow along behind and fill in any gaps or mistakes that I made. I'm also connecting those letters because I prefer them to be connected. And you guys, this is why I like that stamped effect. It doesn't have to look perfect for it to be beautiful. Now I'm gonna go ahead and grab my cutting board, which is dried by now, and my two boxes, which are ready to put together and attach to my cutting board. I'm just going to go ahead and line them up at the bottom of the cutting board, and I just want to make sure that they're even and that my cutting board can stand up on its own. So I wanna make sure that those boxes are basically sitting on the countertop so that it's not top heavy or it's not kind of lopsided. Now I'm just going to use a little bit of hot glue to glue them together and I'm also going to use hot glue to attach them to the cutting board. Now these are just going to be kind of decoration for a kitchen but if you're getting any heavy duty use out of anything that you make from Dollar Tree products I definitely recommend using a stronger adhesive than hot glue like E6000 or Gorilla Glue. And if you're going to sell this, I would recommend going ahead and finishing out the inside and painting it. I just left it open. I styled this with some faux greenery, but you can drop a little pot in there for your little window gardens. And this is a beautiful way to make a planter using this faux wood finish technique. Up next, I'm going to show you how I did transfers before I had a vinyl cutter, and honestly, I still use this technique from time to time. I used it on this dish that I made with a little $3 tray from Walmart. I also used it on this piece of farmhouse decor that I made, and this Christmas decoration also using this technique. So for this project, I'm gonna go ahead and use those outer boxes that I didn't use for my little kitchen planter. And I'm just going to glue one on top of another to get some height. Now, if you want this to actually be as deep as two boxes, you can go ahead and remove the bottom of the first box, but I just wanted the look of it, not necessarily the height. Next, I'm going to go ahead and paint this white. And actually with this, with a wood, texture like this you don't actually have to paint this white for this technique to work if you're doing this on plastic you definitely do but on wood you can do this transfer method directly onto the wood if you want that wood finish to stay there next i'm going over to google and i want this to look like a mosaic tile so i'm going to go ahead and find one that i like by doing a simple google image search and i can't tell you guys exactly what rabbit trail i went down to find this pattern just get on play explore and find a pattern that you like once i've decided on one i'm going to go ahead and measure my boxes to see the size that i need it and i simply put it into the word processor on my computer to expand it to be the size that i needed it to be if you're going to do one of the projects like i showed you before which i will link down in the description box you can just go to your word processor print out joy or the little blessing that was on that farmhouse piece and print it out and do the same technique right onto your project once you have your graphic or your lettering printed out, you're just gonna flip it over and color all over the back of it with a pencil. You wanna get nice, good coverage. I've seen this done actually with chalk as well, which may work. I find a pencil to be easy enough because I always just have one lying around. Once that's done, you're gonna go ahead and use some painter's tape and tape this right onto your project. 
exactly where you want it to go. And then you're gonna come back through with a pen or a sharp pencil, and you're just going to trace over the lettering or the pattern that you've chosen. You can draw right over that tape. It doesn't really matter because all we're trying to do is press that pencil onto the surface that we have beneath so that we can go back behind it and paint. Now I will tell you for other projects where I just do lettering this is much quicker <laughs> than this one where I decided on this slightly complicated pattern to put it on a box with four sides. <laughs> so this was a process for me to finish. I absolutely love how it came out though and if you don't have a vinyl cutter this is a very affordable option to get exactly what you want onto your projects. So now that that's finished, I'm just going to go ahead and remove this from my box. And as you'll see, the entire image is transferred onto my project. So now I don't have to be creative, have any kind of artistic ability or calligraphy skills. I can just go back through with a paint pen. I usually use one of these oil based ones and just fill in that outline and have it look beautiful. And after I've finished all four sides, this is what it looks like. I wanted this to look kind of like a tiled box and I think it just looks gorgeous. I'm absolutely in love with this piece. I made this one to give away, but I have a feeling this one will be hanging out at my house for a little while before it becomes a gift. Now this next project is a classic project that I've done in the past, but it's the perfect example of how to create a faux metal look. So I'm gonna start out with these pet scoops that I got from Dollar Tree, and we're gonna use this metal painting technique to make them look like aged farmhouse metal feed scoops. So I'm going to start out using this magic eraser that I have. You could also use a makeup sponge, and I'm just going to peel off some of the corners to make it more of a rounded and organic shape. Next, I'm going to use a light gray, and I'm using this um, Waverly Chalk Paint and Elephant to do this layer, and I'm just going to dab my makeup sponge or my magic eraser all over whatever it is that I'm painting. Now for the back, I did have to use a sponge paintbrush just to get in those crevices, but you're not going to see that in the final product, so it's okay if it does not look perfect. As you can see, there's some of the color peeking through, but that is okay. So after this first layer of gray, we're going to need a darker gray. So I don't have a darker gray on hand, so I'm just gonna add a little black to the elephant color that I was already using. Folk Art also has a metallic paint line that has a color called gunmetal gray, which is a nice dark gray that you could use at this stage as well. So we're gonna use our sponge once again and we're just gonna dab all over whatever it is that we're trying to make look like metal. Now I'm using the sponge so that you don't see paintbrush strokes, but instead you see all these little speckles of color going throughout and that's what's gonna create that texture to make it look like metal. So this is where it really starts looking like metal. I'm going to use a metallic color and this is the Folk Art Metallic Sterling Silver color. And once again, I'm just gonna dab it all over whatever I'm painting. And when this dries, it's an amazing transformation. It's going to look just like aged metal. I absolutely think it's amazing how real this looks. Now because I'm going for the farmhouse theme, I'm going to age this up a little. I'm going to use a little brown and a little burgundy. You could use red as well. And I'm just going to make a rust color and use the dry brushing technique to just speckle some rust all over my scoop. So all dry brushing means is I'm going to get a little bit of paint on my brush. I'm going to brush most of that off onto a paper towel. And then I'm going to lightly just dab that all over my scoop. And that's it. In a few easy steps, we have our faux metal paint completely finished. This really does look amazing, guys, and you can use it on a variety of different items to make different decor. So what I want to do with this pet scoop is to put some 
candles into it. So I'm gonna make a little riser using these tumbling tower blocks that I got from Dollar Tree. Now, this was the box that had some of the blocks that were already painted brown and some that were the natural wood color. If you can only find the natural color, you could easily stain these a darker color or use the natural wood. That would be really pretty as well. So I'm going to take five of my tumbling tower pieces and just glue them together, try to make them as straight as I can. And I realized that I needed a little piece in the back to make better contact with the pet scoop. So I went ahead and glued that on after a few failed attempts of putting this in. So I'm just gonna put a few dabs of hot glue onto the parts that will touch the scoop and I'm gonna hold it even until it dries. I did add a little bit of extra hot glue right onto the parts where it connected. I wanted to make sure it was nice and secure. Now guys, I wouldn't recommend using real candles with this just because this is plastic even though it looks like metal. And so the candles that I'm putting on there will not be very heavy and I really think that this hot glue will hold and it has. I've had this up for a while and it hasn't been a problem. So next I just want to decorate my candle holder a little bit. So I'm just gonna grab of some ribbon and make a cute little bow. And I'm going to glue that onto my pet scoop. Now guys, when you're gluing anything onto this, with the pet scoop or the project that we're gonna do next, make sure that you put your glue exactly where you want it. If you try to pull the ribbon off or anything else, all your paint is going to come with it. So you really need to be sure of where you want to stick things before you glue them on. I'm gonna add some greenery right under my little stand. And that's it. This is finished. I think it is absolutely gorgeous. And I just put my faux candles right on top and I have this beautiful wall sconce. So I'm going to use my other scoop to make another really cute idea for some wall decor that will match that farmhouse style. I just grabbed a little scrap of ribbon that I had. I love this burlap with the lace. I think it's really pretty, but this would also look really cute with some ribbon with some buffalo check on it or really any burlap, anything you'd like. So I'm just going to make a little pleat in the middle of my ribbon and that's just so that it will go around this rounded piece a little more easily. I went ahead and glued that in and then I just followed the edge of my scoop around with the glue and I'm gonna glue my ribbon in there nice and flat. I did need to cut off some extra on each side just to make sure that it looked nice, but it was really easy to get in there. Now I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. Now guys, if you're not sure of how your ribbon is going to lay, you might want to try once or twice just putting it into place before placing your glue. Because once again, if you glue it and you're not happy with it and you try to take it off, all of your paint is gonna come right along with the ribbon just because of the type of plastic that we painted onto. And it's that easy. I think it's super adorable, but I just wanted to add a little bit of ribbon to make it match the other sconce that we made. So once again, I just snipped off a little piece of ribbon and this time I added a little bit of twine. Couldn't help myself, I love this stuff. So I just tied my bow and I did a loose tie and then before it was completely tightened, I just put a little bit of twine right into the hole. And this is just a little detail that I'm sure no one will notice, but I will. I think it's cute, so I wanted to add that. Once I have that completed, I'm ready to just add a little bit of greenery inside. And it's just another cute idea for some farmhouse decor. And this really only cost me a dollar, not including paint and glue, because I had all the rest of the scraps already at my house. Up next, a really simple and affordable way to make your pieces look like they've been glazed. So I'm going to use another one of these Dollar Tree boxes for this project, and I'm gonna go ahead and paint this white. 
Now I wanted to kind of get a watercolor effect going and I wanted it to fade from dark into a white color and that's why I'm using this white as a base. Of course you can use whatever color you'd like to to create this effect. Once this is dry and I still need to paint the inside, I did that afterwards, but once the outside was dry, I'm going to go ahead and create my watercolor effect. So using this black paint, I'm going to put just a little bit into some cups and I'm going to add a little bit of water to that and mix it. Now my first one, I want it to be just pretty thick, but not quite as diluted as my second because I wanted to have kind of an ombre effect. So I just put a few drops of water into that first cup. And then for my second cup, I used even less paint and even less water so that it was almost completely diluted. But because it's black, you could still see that that color and pigmentation was there to put onto my project. So I'm going to start out with that lighter, more diluted color black, and I'm just going to go ahead and use my sponge to spread it all over my box. And I'm just leaving a little bit of that white up there at the top because I wanted it to fade into that white. Now, once that layer was dry, I'm gonna go in with my other black, which is also diluted, but a little bit less diluted. So I'm gonna get a darker color out of that. And once again, I'm gonna go through and just use my brush to paint it on, making sure to make kind of highs and lows to give it some visual interest so that the two layers of color are kind of playing with each other as far as the level and how the waves looked. This was really fun to experiment with and you can really make it your own. There's no real way to make this look bad. Now I decided it needed an even darker layer so I took my paintbrush which was still slightly wet and I just added some undiluted black paint right onto it and I used that to make another layer of black onto the bottom of my watercolor. Now once that's dried, it looks like this beautiful ombre effect with the watercolor paint and you can really do this with any color paint you'd like. Now this is the secret to making it look like glazed ceramic. I'm going to use this triple thick Rust-Oleum glaze spray paint and I'm just going to go through and paint the entire box. Now I did actually three or four coats of this and I'm a little bummed you can't see exactly the detail on the camera for this video but this gives it this beautiful glazed look and it really does look like a ceramic um, glaze when it's finished. Now you can use this on any project where you're using chalk paint. I have tried it with my oil paint pen and it ran and it did not look quite as beautiful, but definitely try this out to make a faux ceramic glaze look. Next up, another classic DIY and one that you guys have asked me about over and over. I'd love to use this in my house. I'm gonna show you how I made some vases using this faux ceramic technique. DIY, I'm going to start with some vases that I got from Dollar Tree. I love the shape of these and I thought they would be perfect for this project. I'm going to use chalk paint and just paint a layer or two of paint over all of them, making sure to get all my brush strokes in the same direction because I want that to look nice and smooth when I'm done. Now I didn't worry too much about the coverage on the bottom because I'm going to be covering that up in the next step. Now I'm going to use a technique that I saw on TikTok to make a really cool textured effect in your paint. So I'm going to use some chalk paint and I went for this light brown color and then I'm going to add some baking soda to that and combine it completely until it's kind of smooth but a very thick version of chalk paint. Now you can add as much baking soda as you would like to your mixture. That's just going to change the texture and what it looks like when you put it on your vase. So I wanted mine to be pretty thick because I wanted to get the most drastic contrast that I could between that smooth um, plaster colored chalk paint that I put on there and this textured color. Next, I'm going to use some painter's tape and just tape off where I want the line to be between my two colors and textures of chalk paint. Now, this vase is kind of curved, so you really have to work with it to get that line to be straight. The top of your tape is going to be a little wrinkly, but that's okay. You want the bottom of your tape to be nice and smooth because that's going to create a nice clean line when we're done with our project. 
And I'm gonna do the same thing with the other vase, but I thought this one would look pretty cool with an asymmetric look. So I did a high-low effect with my painter's tape in order to add my texture onto the vase. Once everything is taped off, I'm ready to play and experiment with this mixture of paint. Now I decided to do more of a stippling effect on the bottom because I wanted it to kind of look like plaster or mud or like it had been shaped um, just by clay or earth. I really liked the idea of that smooth and chunky, but when I put it on there, it was kind of flattening out a little bit on me, so I added some more baking soda and that fixed it right up. It was nice and thick and all those little peaks and valleys from the stippling really showed up. So just play around with it guys. See what it looks like as you go. Add some, add some paint, just see how you like it. So once I got everything covered came the most satisfying part of any DIY, which is taking that painter's tape off and revealing that nice clean line. You guys, I love the contrast between that smooth light chalk paint and that textured effect on the bottom. I think these came out so beautifully. They look so high end and you would never guess how quick and easy they were to put together. And the last faux finish I want to show you guys is how I make this faux marble look. You can also use the same technique to make a faux concrete look. I'm going to start out by using this box once again from Dollar Tree and I'm going to paint it with a layer of this elephant colored chalk paint. If you want to make it look more like concrete than a darker marble, you can go ahead and use a lighter gray finish or kind of mix this color with white and make this lighter but use the same technique and it'll look more like a concrete mixture. Once I have the entire box covered, I'm going to make a mixture of light gray and dark gray. Now, I didn't have any on hand, and if you do, that makes this step a lot easier. But what I did was I took the same elephant chalk paint and I added white to one little drop of it and black to the other so that I can make sure and make a lighter and darker color. Next, I'm just taking a kitchen sponge, and I believe this is one that I got from Dollar Tree as well. I have wet this up a little bit so it's not dry, but not dripping wet. It's just kind of damp. And I'm also going to take it and kind of tear off any corners that are there because I don't want any hard edges in my paint. And I'm kind of breaking it up in the middle as well so that it can be kind of a looser, spongy look. Now, this is another project where it doesn't have to be perfect. These are my favorite kind. <laughs> this is kind of an abstract thing that you're making, so if it's not perfect, don't worry. That will add to the look of it. So first, I'm just going to sponge on some darker color, and I'm also going to sponge on some of the lighter color. Now, I'm not doing this in any you know, particular pattern or rhyme and reason. I'm just kind of trying to get that color all over, but to avoid major brush strokes that will be a little harder to cover up later. Next, I'm coming in with that damp sponge and I'm just kind of smearing this all around. So I want to mix that light color and that dark color and just think of what marble would look like. You kind of get those swirls of colors in there. Now, because we kind of stippled it on earlier, I don't have to worry about any huge globs of black or white. I'm just kind of trying to swirl it all together and get a faux look of some kind of stone. Now, if you want to do concrete, I've found that if I kind of do a lighter gray and then do more of the lighter stippling than the darker, that really does make it look like concrete. But you can just go ahead and play with it. Right here, I squeezed a little water on there out of the sponge so that it kind of smeared around more and gave me more of that marbled look. Just have fun with it and make this your own. Uh, 
After I've done my marbling effect, I'm just going to go through and very lightly put some little flecks of light and dark in there. This just reminds me of kind of those little pebbles and flecks of color that you often see in stone. I've also done this where I've done this with a little bit of a gold tone, which is also really, really beautiful. Now you can go ahead and seal this with a matte spray if you want it to last you a little bit longer, but I love the look of this and how much fun it can be to play with the different colors and make this marbled effect all your own. Okay, it's really hard for me, you guys, to choose a favorite out of today's DIYs. And that's simply because there's something about like getting a, something simple from Dollar Tree, like a wood box, and by the time you're done, just have it look completely different. And so anytime I do like these transformations with both finishes, I just really love the way they look because you would never guess that they started out as a Dollar Tree wood box or vase or anything like that. But head down to the comments and let me know which one was your favorite. And in the spirit of making things look like other things, <laughs> I have a DIY treat for you today that I made for my girls. They recently had Dr. Seuss week at school. And so I made these faux green eggs and ham for them. And so I'm gonna show you how to make this quick, easy faux treat. <laughs> okay guys, it's time to eat. For this faux green eggs and ham, I'm going to start out with these pretzel snaps. Of course, you can use any shape pretzels and it will taste delicious, but this shape lends itself to the effect that I'm trying to get here of eggs and toast or eggs and ham. So I'm going to start out by getting a cookie sheet lined with some parchment paper and I'm going to put down my pretzels. You can make as many of these as you'd like. These are perfect for a party because they come together so easily. Next, I'm going to go ahead and take some of these candy melts that I got from the grocery store and I'm going to place one on top of each square. Now, I did notice after I made it that if you kind of put the little candy melts slightly off center and not perfectly in the middle, it really adds to the effect of the eggs and toast. Next, I'm going to take those and set them aside. And while I do that, I'm gonna take my package of M&Ms and I'm just going to sort them out. Now I'm trying to make green eggs and ham, so I'm gonna take the green ones out. I'm also going to take the yellow ones out so they'll look like regular <laughs> toast with eggs. Of course, I had like a thousand blue ones that I did not need, so I had another pack of M&Ms on hand just in case. Now I put these in the oven on only about 200 and I left it for about four minutes. I wanted my egg whites to just be slightly melted but not to start to drip off of the pretzel. And when I take them out, I'm going to immediately place the yolk of my egg right into my egg whites. Now, once again, I did notice that the ones of these that I did that were not perfectly in the middle really added to the effect. So. Embrace your creativity and your imperfection on these because that will make them look just adorable. I added all my green yolks and then I added my yellow ones and that was it. You guys, these are salty, sweet, super whimsical and I just love that kind of faux effect of a candy breakfast. I hope you enjoyed the DIYs I had for you today. Please don't forget to head down to the comments and let me know which one was your favorite. Give this video a thumbs up and please share it with your friends. Also, head over and check out DIY Beauty on Purpose. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time when we repeat it all again.